Hello, welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geek at Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. The other day I was watching one of the newly added tutorials here at Geek at Play by Arthur Rosa and he goes into great detail explaining how he created this image right here which is uh, what his tutorial about and it focuses really very strongly on how he created this cave here and he did it in ZBrush and while I don't have ZBrush I have Hexagon and Cinema 4D I thought well everything he's doing here in ZBrush I can do comparably well in Hexagon so I started playing around and I created a cave and I thought well that'll be fun and then um, based on seeing his tutorial and looking at his image I had kind of an inspiration to create an image of my own which is uh, this one here over at Cornucopia and I started off with a couple cubes in hexagon and subdivided them added a lot of smoothing and spent probably oh a half hour creating some very detailed rocks very high resolution very detailed mesh but you have to have that uh, detail in order to be able to have uh, complex surfaces on the object that you're creating. So I spent probably a good half hour using soft selection tool in hexagon and I created some very um, detailed boulders. Then I brought them into view, assigned uh, some rock materials to them and well I soon realized that they weren't detailed enough. They were Oh, I think all three of them together uh, was about 20,000 polygons and I realized that even with the rock materials uh, applied to them they weren't detailed enough they were still too smooth I thought well I could always go back into hexagon and play around with some of the displacement brushes which would add uh, which would quickly add a lot of detail and I thought well there's got to be a better way around and then I remembered the displacement function that view has that allows you to create very easily extreme detail complex detail in whatever 3d object you import into it without having to have a high resolution high density mesh 3d object well, I, I'm not going to explain how to create displacement materials. Vladimir has already created two tutorials on this subject matter, creating a rock slide, and he goes into creating bump displacement rocks and another one for uh, material displacement rocks. And he goes into detail on how to use the function editor and create your own and you'll find that under um, BC3 uh, over a geek at play so what I am going to do is show you how I ended up creating the image that I did with those rocks and the simple way I went about doing it um, I created this one this morning and the uh, detail in these rocks is pretty good and if I did this in hexagon having to add all these bumps and all these irregularities no doubt it would take quite a bit of time so I cheated and used the displacement function in view so I'm gonna start off in hexagon and oh, let's abort that. Let's uh, start off with bake, making a cube and I'll add two levels of smoothing to it. Click on my little lightning bolt there and I think I'll just elongate it like that. That looks good. Let's squash it make it a little bit flat and I'm going to click on the bottom there enable soft selection and run the radius up uh, Let's bring it up to about seven. And I just want to flatten out the bottom of it a little bit. Okay. Like a big stone monolith. 
Okay, let's create another cube. Two levels of smoothing to that. Commit that level of smoothing by clicking on my lightning bolt. And let's elongate this one, squash it down, make it a little bit more narrow. And I guess just create a little balancing act here. And create another one, two levels of smoothing, commit that level of smoothing. And let's put bring this one over here. Now even though I'm using hexagon, everything I'm doing here is, can be done in uh, probably in the other 3D modeling program. It's just that hexagon is really my program of choice because of its ease of use. Okay, so these are my, and I say this tongue-in-cheek, highly detailed, extremely uh, complexly sculpted rocks that we are going to export to our desktop rocks those are the boulders that I spent a lot of time on and now let's uh, come on into view so here in view I've imported my fancy boulders and notice the polygon count down here in the lower right corner 578 polygons and I guess if you look at the cheesy boulders, they look about maybe 578 polygons. Well, I want to apply a nice boulder material to that. So coming over here into rocks, the rocks tab. Oh, I like the complex rock. We'll apply that to it. And the rock material looks good. But as we finish up with our render here, we still have all these smooth edges along the outside of our object and that's not at all like the boulders when we use the displacement function and well like I said before I'm not going to go into explaining it no sense in reinventing the wheel when it's already been invented Vladimir already did tutorials on that but instead I show you the uh, some benefits of a product that I bought a, a month or so ago and I'm I guess kind of lazy where if I can buy something that'll do all the work for me I'm gonna buy it and uh, Monsoon has created all of these rock materials um, each one with displacement and each one without displacement and so I think I chose this one and immediately Notice the difference in the results that you get when you apply displacement to your bump material. We've got all this irregularity in the shape of the stone that if you were to do this in Hexagon or any other modeling program and do this all with a 3D mesh, you'd be spending a lot of time and you'd be running up your polygon count really really high and like I said I guess I am lazy and if someone can do the work for me and all I gotta do is pay a few dollars well that's all the be about all the better for me if you do want to play around with creating your own dis let me uh, reset this material uh, you want to play around creating your own displacements, come over here to the Bump tab, enable Displacement ma Mapping, right-click, Function Editor, and create a new tab over here. And I guess I'll create a simple fractal. Now, one thing I do not have a great understanding on or any expertise is the function editor kind of it always gives me a headache I just don't grasp it that well um, so that's why I am very favorable to buying a product that will do all the work for me so I guess I'll start off with Veroni and click OK uh, click OK and let's do a quick render well here's our quick render and you do see a lot 
uh, a, a little bit more irregularity in the shape but uh, in order to get the kind of results that I could get simply by single clicking on a product that's already available uh, it saves me time saves me the headache and the results are absolutely stunning and that is one of the uh, benefits of using the displacement feature in view 7 and I don't recall but view 6 may also have it as well so this is uh, really showing the benefits of using the displacement function in view and I hope you can benefit from this and maybe take uh, advantage of it a little bit more the rendering time will be slightly increased if you use displacement mapping but the end results literally speak for themselves and it's uh, it's worth the extra few minutes or moments depending upon your render settings and size of the render but the uh, results are certainly worth the added time so Thanks for watching this tutorial here at Geek at Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Have a good day.